In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Some years ago, during my training, I remember having to visit a young man in prison, a Dublin prison. Initially, in a, my first one or two periods with this young man, I happened to mention that my mother was unwell. Anyway, the visits continued and it came to the point when I was making my last visit to him. The first time I saw him, I found him very down in himself. It was his first time in prison. His family was now broken up. He'd lost his home. He and his wife were separated. And he hadn't had any contact with his children for some time. He couldn't even read or write. Yet, when I saw him on this last visit, the man greeted me. How are you? How was your mother? How did I get on with this or that? He was enthusiastic and genuinely concerned. This man put aside all his own troubles and reached out to someone else. He was, in a sense, dying to self. Just as the Gospel message in John 12 encourages us to do. He was keeping going, he was persevering. And this experience caused me to wonder, who is the real prisoner here? For all my apparent freedom, was I really free enough to reach out in the way, the same way that this man did? Or was I so preoccupied with my own cozy, comfortable situation? So caught up in my own little world that in fact, I'd lock the door on myself to keep others out. Another way of copping out, of giving up on Christ and my neighbour. Over the years, we have all heard people say, it's a hard life, it's hard to keep going. In more recent times, and they say something similar, but perhaps more sinister. It's now, why bother? Who cares anymore? Or what's the point? Perhaps we've said as much ourselves. And we know that there are all sorts of reasons why people feel like this. Nothing may seem to go right. We have one catastrophe after another, tiffs and upsets with others, problems inside the family and outside, or both. And we have the bills, problems maybe with drink, with drugs, with sickness, with accidents, with theft, or whatever. And then we read of the failings in those 
we have looked up to, maybe in our priests or politicians. Where's Christ in all of this, we ask? And some have stopped going to Mass, going to church, perhaps stopped believing altogether. Why should I bother anymore, they say? Well, in many ways, it's understandable why we often come to feel like this. There are a lot of hurts and brokenness in our world today. Suffering is never easy. But however unfashionable it may be to say so in these times, the fact is that Christians are called to suffer, to take up their cross daily, to die to self and to persevere. It's possible to do it with God's help. Remember the scriptural text that tells us of the leper who, when he saw the Lord, went down on his knees and said, Master, if you want to, you can make me clean. And Jesus responded, of course I want to, replied Jesus. And he healed the man. Has God lost his compassion and love? No, he hasn't. He can't. It's in his nature to be so compassionate. His love for all his creatures is so great, he wants us to reach the fullness of life and be with him forever. And yet we might ask, well, how is it he allows much suffering in the world, in people's lives, if he loves us so much? Well, I don't see any simple answer to that. There is some mystery about suffering. The book of Job makes that clear. But you know, sometimes we bring suffering upon ourselves. If we do things that we know are wrong, whatever immediate satisfaction we may get, often there'll be consequences that bring pain. We know this. We're used to our own law of the land and the likely consequences if we deliberately break the law. We may end up in prison. And we respect the law because it helps in promoting and maintaining good order in society. Well, the law of God is given to us to help promote and maintain good order in our lives, particularly in the spiritual sense. The very existence of the Decalogue, the Ten Commandments, and of the Beatitudes reflect God's love and compassion for us because we're God's creatures and he knows what's best for us, what is good for us in the way we live. If we ignore or go against them, then we shouldn't blame God for the consequent suffering that might ensue. We can look at suffering in other ways too, in more positive ways. Jesus tells us that we must take up our cross daily. He has led the way. He's carried the cross to Calvary. 
He's taken upon himself our sins. And so we might ask, well, why then do we need to carry the cross in our lives? God, in his wisdom, knows that we're weak creatures. Why was it necessary for him to send his only son into the world to suffer and to die for us? He knows us better than we do ourselves. Sure, didn't Jesus tell us every hair on our head has been counted? The cross is painful. It means suffering of some kind for us in our lives. However it is manifested in our lives, the important thing is how we respond. The great Saint Padre Pio is reputed to have said, if we knew the value of suffering, we would beg for more. We can be sure it's out of love for us that God allows suffering, allows the cross in our lives. And talking of love, when we fall in love, it's usual for us to have a profound feeling, an experience of happiness, of joy and peace, especially in the company of the one we love. There's an interaction, a tingling maybe, rather like electricity passing through our veins, although not too much, I hope. And it's more than just a feeling. There's something that goes beyond all this. Jesus offers us all of this and more. He won't necessarily always give us nice feelings. On the spiritual journey, it's commonplace for the cross to follow consolations, for consolations to follow the cross. Through them, and in treating Jesus as a real friend, we grow in intimacy with him. When we accept the cross out of love for him, we let him mold us. We let him knock some of the rough edges off us. And we get a greater appreciation of the awful suffering Jesus underwent for us to help us come to our Heavenly Father, Abba, and the joy of eternal life in God's kingdom. God is a God of joy. He's also a God of surprises. Sometimes he may give us gifts we're slow to recognize. And this reminds me of a lovely little story passed on to us by a parishioner. And the story goes that some time ago, a man punished his five-year-old daughter for wasting a roll of expensive gold wrapping paper money was tight and he became even more upset when the child pasted the gold paper so as to decorate the box to put under the Christmas tree. Nevertheless, the little girl brought the gift box to her father the next morning and said, this is for you, daddy. Father was embarrassed by his earlier overreaction. 
But his anger flared up again when he found the box was empty. He spoke to her in a harsh manner. Don't you know, young lady, when you give someone a present, there's supposed to be something inside the package. Well, the little girl looked up at him with tears in her eyes and said, Oh, Daddy, it's not empty. I blew kisses into it until it was full. The father was crushed. He fell on his knees and put his arms around his little girl and begged her to forgive him for his unnecessary anger. An accident took the life of this child only a short time later. And it is told that the father kept that gold box by his bed for all the years of the rest of his life. And whenever he was discouraged or faced difficult problems, he would open the box and take out an imaginary kiss and remember the love of the child who had put it there. It's a beautiful story, isn't it? Well, how much more are the consolations and gifts of love given to us through the Holy Spirit of God. We receive many gentle kisses, as it were, in the embrace of God when we struggle and turn to Him in prayer. We may, though, have cause to reflect and wonder whether we offered the Lord gift boxes that really are empty when we turn to Him. Are our gift boxes full of kisses? Kisses that come from devout prayer and acts of love towards others. Every time we reach out to the poor, the lonely, the marginalized, and provide some kindness, even perhaps just a kind word, like the prisoner I mentioned early on, or even to provide a listening ear, or a smile, or even practical help. We can think of that as like a little kiss blown into our gift box for the Lord. While we continue this earthly journey, we experience a mixture of joy and sorrow. Christian joy does not come from the absence of sorrow, pain or trouble, but from an awareness of the presence of Christ within our souls, within our hearts. St. Paul was in prison when he made his call to the Philippines to be happy and rejoice in the Lord. And in the Old Testament, we read of Zechariah rejoicing at the height of the Jewish exile when things could not have been worse politically and the people were at a moral low point. Both of their plights, their situations, were perhaps more disastrous than ours. Yet, they didn't allow personal circumstances to rob them of joy. They had joy because they were grounded in the peace of God. We might ask then, how are we to attain this spiritual joy 
which should be rightfully ours. It's the same question asked by the people of John in the Gospel. He replied that the secret is to commit ourselves to God's way, and in doing that, we find peace. Happiness comes from doing good, being honourable, and showing concern for those in need. So, let us say a prayer. Lord Jesus, help us always to remember the gifts that God gives us, to be thankful, to appreciate these, and not to shy away when we're called upon to suffer, to suffer for your sake. Help us to reach out to those in need, whether in small ways or other ways. We thank you, Lord. We ask you to bless all those we encounter in our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shalom World TV is an impressive enterprise. Using the modern means of communication brings to our world the gospel of Jesus Christ. May their work of evangelization through means of communication be a blessing for all. I commend to you the work and the message especially of Shalom World TV. Their mission is to be fruitful and blessed. They, in their own lives, as well as those to whom they proclaim the gospel, they are to have blessing, they are to know peace. And to all, may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you love this day and forever. Amen. Shalom world, God's own channel.